Hello Year 4, I hope you're all okay. Today in maths we're going to be continuing looking at division but today we're going to make sure we're a bit more secure at using the part whole model to be able to find the answers to two digit numbers divided by one digit numbers. To start with you have your daily fluency so if you spend around about three or four minutes on this please and pause the video here, off you go. Okay, so number one, 431 multiplied by five. You can use your written method of multiplication to work this out. The answer is 2,155. Number two, writing down all the factors of 12. Well, we know we have multiple factor pairs of 12, which are one and 12, two and six, and three and four. So there are six factors of 12. Number three, 42 divided by six. You could use your six times table to work out how many sixes are in 42. The answer is seven. Number four, round 347 to the nearest 10. If we know we're looking at the nearest 10, we can look at our tens in our number, which is that four. We have four tens, which is 40. Now, because that number is 47, we are going to be rounding up because it's, if it's five or above, we round up. So we can round that to 350. And number five, complete the part whole models. Well, for the first one, if we know 84 has been partitioned by 80, we know that we have used all of our tens and we have four ones. For 84, this one, we know that we have used 14 ones, so we have seven tens, which is 70 left over. And for the final one, we have found that we have six tens, which is 60. We can count on and find out that we need to have two tens and four ones to make 84, which is 24. Okay, so we are going to continue with our division today. So thinking back to yesterday, when you used the place value chart and your base 10 or your place value counters to work out division, can you please use the same method to work out 66 divided by 3 please? Pause the video here now and off you go. Okay, so I have got my place value chart here. Because my divisor is 3, I have got my 3 rows ready. I am going to begin with which column year for, my 10s or my 1s? Good remembering, we're gonna start with our tens. We always start with our biggest number when we are dividing. So we're gonna start with our tens. So we're gonna start by placing one base 10 in each of our columns, sorry, rows. And then we can still, still see we have some left over. So we're going to pop the other three in there and they fitted in nicely. Now, do we need to make an exchange with our tens? No, we don't because we have fitted them in equally into our rows nice. Um, and equally. So we can now start with our ones. We know we have six ones. So we can begin to put one one in each row and then another one in each row. We can see that we have um, distributed these nicely. So we can now see we have two tens and two ones, which is the same as 22. Now, Tiny has said that he's noticed that there are two tens and two ones in each row. I wonder why this is. Why do you think? Okay, so we know that six ones divided by three is two ones. So we know that six tens divided by three is two tens. So we can use our knowledge of our threes to know that three is a multiple of six tens and six ones. So it's going to have two tens and two ones. So sometimes we can use our times table numbers and our knowledge to work out what we think an answer is going to be before we work it out. So that's just an extra tip for you there. Okay. I want you to have a go and have a think. How would you work this one out? 84 divided by six. Pause the video here and have a think, please. Off you go. Okay, so I have got my place value chart again, but this time it's a bit larger because my divisor is six. That means I need six rows ready to show that I am dividing by six. Now we know, do we start with our tens or our ones year four? Our tens, fantastic. We can start distributing our tens out so that there is one ten per each row. Now we can see we have two tens left over. Now what can we do with these tens? Can you just tell the screen for me? Fantastic. We can exchange both of our tens for ten ones. So we will exchange our two tens for twenty ones. So we can now see that we have twenty four counters to now distribute in our ones row, um, our one rows. So we can start popping our ones in the right rows there. And you can see now we have one ten and four ones. So eighty four divided by six is fourteen. Fantastic if you got that one right. 
Now yesterday, we looked at the part-whole method as, a, as partitioning as a way of working out different division sums. Now firstly here, we found out that we could partition 39 into 3 tens, which is 30, and 9 ones, which is 9. And we knew that this would work partitioning it into its tens and ones, because both of these numbers are divisible by our divisor, which was 3. And we found out that when we divided both of these numbers by 3, we got 10 and 3. And when we add them together, we got our answer of 13. Now, when we looked at 42 divided by 3, it was a little bit different because we couldn't partition it into its 10s and 1s, which is 40 and 2. Why couldn't we partition it into 40 and 2? Well done, because this time our divisor is also 3, and we cannot divide 2 by 3, and we cannot divide 40 by 3. And what we did, we thought, what number, which is a multiple of 10, can we divide by 3? We know that we can divide 30 by 3, and then we found out what can we add to 30 to make our whole number of 42, and that was 12. And then we could divide both of these numbers by 3, which is what we did, and that's how we came with the answer of 14. Now, it's really, really useful that you use your knowledge of the 10 times table so that you can decide what this first number is going to be. Because if my number, if my divisor was 4, I know that I could use my 10 times table knowledge to know that we could use one of our numbers as 40 because that can be divided by 4. Another example, if my divisor was 5, we could have our first number as 50 because we automatically know that is a multiple of 5. Okay? I want you to have a go at thinking, how would you partition 96 from these divisions? So you have a multiple, um, like you have different divisors here that you're going to be having a go at dividing by 96, dividing 96 by. So I want you to think, what, how are you going to partition the number 96 in each of these examples? It may be that you partition it in the same way for most of them, and it may be that you partition it in a slightly different way. Can you just pause the video and have a think? What do you notice about the way that you have to partition 96 in these examples? Pause the video and have a think, please. Okay, so let's have a look at the first three. So the first three solutions are coming up on the screen and I'm just going to talk you through them. I wonder if you noticed the same thing that I noticed. So, in each of these examples, we have partitioned the number 96 in the same way. We have partitioned it into eight tens, which is 80, and the number 16, because 80 add 16 is 96. So we know we've partitioned it correctly. Now, if we look here, our divisor is 8. And we can see that eight can be, eight, um, 80 can be divided by 8 because it is a multiple of the 10 times table because it is 10. And our leftover number 16 can also be divided by 8, which is 2. Adding them together, getting 12. I wonder if you got the same as me. Now for number two, we have chosen to divide it in the same way, to partition it in the same way, because 80 and 16 are both divisible by 4. Because we know that 8 can be divided by 4, which is 2, and we can add the 0 on to make 20. When we add our final two numbers together, we get 24. Finally, we have also decided to partition the number 96 in the same way too. Because we know that 80 can be divided by 2. We can think, what is 8 divided by 2? Oh, that's 4. And then we can multiply it by 10 and add the 0 on, which is 40. And we also know that 16 can be divided by 2 because that's by 2, 2, because that is 8. And add them both together, you get 48. What do you notice about the partition numbers? Well, we've already said it's the same numbers that are partitioned each time. What do you notice about the divisor in each of these sums? Mm. The divisor is, divi is halving each time. 8 halved is 4, 4 halved is 2. Now what do you notice about your answers? Mm, they're doubling. So 12 doubled is 24, 24 doubled is 48. Why do you think this? Mm, because when we are dividing our numbers by half each time, like our divisors by 8 and 4 by 2, 
that doubles our product, which is 12 to 24 to 48. So sometimes you can notice patterns between the divisor and the answer that you're going to have. Now, just by looking at the next one, number four, I have chosen to partition this into 60 and 36. This is because my divisor is six and we can look at our 10 times table knowledge, knowing that six is in the 10 times table when you add, when you have 60, because 60 divided by six is 10. And we can also divide 36 by six, which is six. Now, if you are an expert in your, in your times tables, you will also know that 90 is divided by six because you can divide it by six to get 15. Add it to the one and you also get 16. So the two different ways that I've partitioned, you can partition it in a way that makes it easier for you. Now, I sometimes prefer to use my 10 times table knowledge and think that if my divisor is six, then I know 60 is going to be one of my numbers. And that always makes it really super easy for me. But if you want to challenge yourself further and remember that you actually are really good at your times tables like you all are, then you can go for the bigger numbers too. Similarly with number five, this time I've chosen to partition it in three ways. My divisor is three and I know that 30 is divisible by three because we get 10. And I know three thirties make 90. So I can, instead of partitioning it into 90 and six, I can partition it into three thirties and six, which would give me the same answer as if I'd chosen to partition it by 90 and six, because 90 divided by three is 30, we can divide nine by three, which is three, and then multiply it by 10, which is 30. But it really depends on how confident you are, okay? So it depends on how confident you are and how you want to partition it. Partition it in a way that makes you, makes it easier for you to deal with. Now, we can notice here that the way that we have partitioned number four and number five are exactly the same. But look at our answers. What do you notice? Hmm. 32 is 16 doubled, the same way that 16 is 32 halved. And we can also use our divisors to help us with that too. So it's all about noticing those patterns. Now, we're going to look at one reasoning and problem solving question here. The teacher has 63 stickers that they share equally between three pupils. So we know that our sum is looking a bit like 63 divided by three. Now the children think that they will get 22 stickers each, but we want to use a partitioning method to work out if the children are correct. I would like you to pause the video and think of all the different ways you can partition 63 into its tens and ones, or maybe a different way, and try and share this equally between three pupils and see what answer you get. Pause the video and have a go. Okay, you might have partitioned 63 into 60 and 3 because you know that 60 and 3 are both divisible by 3. You might have also partitioned 63 into 30, 30 and 3, which breaks it down a bit more easier for you. Either way, 60 divided by 3 is... 20 well done and 3 divided by 3 is 1 so they will have two tens and one ones which is the same as 21 so are the children correct no they're not correct because 30 divided by 3 is 10 sorry 63 divided by 3 is 21 and that's how we worked it out by looking at 30 divided by 3 is 10 33 divided by 3 is 11 and 10 at 11 is 21 they will get 21 stickers each Finally then here, here are some digit cards. So we want to use the partitioning method to complete two number sentences using these cards. We need to use all the numbers. Now, are we going to start with the smallest number first when we're dividing? No, we're going to start with the biggest number. We can start with the number 48. So we need to think 48 divided by something gives us something else. Now let's scan the cards and think, what do one of these numbers look a bit like 48? Oh, four. Could we divide 48 by four? Yes, we could. We could use a partitioning method to work that out. I'm going to show you how to do that in a minute. But for the meantime, can we divide 48 by something else? Hmm. Ah, shall we try and divide it by three? Shall I show you how I worked it out? Okay, so for the top one, I partitioned 48 into 40 and 8. And I divided them both by four, giving me 10 and 2. 10 add 2 is 12. So we can see we've used the numbers 48, 4 and 12. For the second one, I did decide to part, um, divide it by three because we then decided to partition it 
by using 30 and 18 because 30 divided by 3 is 10 and 18 divided by 3 is 6 and 10 add 6 is 16. So we have used all of the digit cards to work out some uh, division sums. Now it's your turn so I would like you to have a go at completing the questions on the worksheet. I'm really looking forward to seeing these. See you in our next video. Bye year four.